Hey everyone, welcome to the first of many videos on Photopea slash Photoshop. Remember, whatever we learn in Photopea should, by the time that we all get back into Photoshop, translate pretty easily over. Um, yeah, pop up there, sorry. Uh, so I just wanted to introduce you to the interface. I know some of you yesterday, we went through this already, but uh, here is my spiel. Um, so this is Photopea. You can reach it through photopea.com. Uh, when you first get here, uh, let me start by talking about the layout. Um, on the left side here, and this is common in many image editing programs, you will find the toolbar. If you see a tool with a small arrow to the bottom right of it, that means that that tool has other tools, similar tools, stacked underneath it. Uh, we will probably not be using or learning every single one of these tools, but we will learn lots of them. And you're always free to experiment or ask questions about them if it's something that we haven't covered. <clears throat> and I will do my best to answer. Um, not all of them have that little uh, that arrow or the stack underneath them. But like I said, many of them do. So if there's a tool that you ever can't find, then there's a good chance it's stacked. And if you just search for other similar tools, you might be able to find it if you right-click on that similar tool that you find. So once again, on this side over here, this is called our toolbar or toolbox. Sometimes you will hear it called a toolbox. Within that toolbox, our tools are organized uh, between selection tools over here. Uh, we have editing tools over here. We have text manipulation and more vector graphics over here, which, is, which would include text, the pen tool, uh, and shapes. Uh, and then beneath that, you have your hand tool or your move tool. Uh, it's called hand tool in here. Uh, and then your zoom tool. At the very bottom of your toolbox, we have two colors. This one is known as the foreground color, and underneath that is your background color. So your foreground color is what is usually going to be used by your uh, by your brushes and by your by the pen tool, by you know your shapes by default. Um, whatever you create will usually use the uh, the foreground uh, color. The background color is, I mean. Usually, the only the main instance that I see it used is it, when you're doing a gradient color because a gradient gradually uh, transitions is the word I was looking for from one color to the other, um, and so it transitions from whatever your foreground color is to your background color. And we'll get into gradients later, but you can do a lot more than just one color if you want to with those. All right, moving on. On the right side of our screen over here, this is considered our, these are our palettes or our panels. Uh, and you do have lots of different panels, more than what you really see here. The CHA and the PAR, for example, um, help you edit text and they control the characters in the paragraph settings. <clears throat> and so on, BRU is for brush, PRO is for properties, which can have to do with anything that you have selected, any sort of object. Um, but your panels control typically what's already on the screen. Uh, what you've already drawn in your canvas. Uh, layers is a panel that we will be getting very, very familiar with right here. Uh, it's one of the more powerful features of most advanced image editing programs. It allows you to like stack one thing on top of other things and to switch them around and have one layer effect only like this layer or these two layers or, or so on, whatever you place on those layers. Um, so it gives you a lot of a very sort of tight control of your image uh, of what is going where. Um, the next area that I wanted to point out are the is the menu bar. Menu bar is going to be up here at the very top. These are your these are your menus here: file, edit, image, layer, select, filter, view, window, more. Uh, your uh, your menus give you access to most of mostly most of the same features that you get from your toolbox, from your panels on this side, uh, but they do it in sort of a more organized way. If you ever like close a panel on accident, you can find it again in your through your menu bar. Um, or if you just can't find a tool for whatever reason, it's probably going to be accessible through the menu bar. If it has something to do with layers, you're going to find it in the layer menu. If it has to do with the selection, you'll find it in the select menu and so on. Uh, beneath the menus, 
are the options the options bar the options bar changes you can see that it changes depending on which tool i have selected so it gives me different options for different tools so uh, when i select for example the move tool uh, it allows me to see transform controls control distances uh, and then change the alignment of one object compared to another object for example and there's lots more that you can do with that but uh, this is your options bar. So when I say options bar, this is what I mean right here. Oh, I should now. Um, I will show you the document tabs in a second. Oh, well, there's the, of course the all important document area. This area in here, the area that you actually do the work in, is called your document area. The when you have an image open, for example, if I go to new project and I just create whatever happens to be there. This white area, this is called my canvas, and my canvas appears within my document area. Um, when I have, once I open a project, it might be blank, it might have, you know, a thousand different layers on it, whatever, it opens as a tab. So I can cycle through my various tabs um, here at the top, just below my options bar. So this is where my document tabs go, right in here, and I can close a tab or I can. If I have a bunch of them open, I can I can drag and rearrange them into a different order if I want to, so that my relevant ones are next to each other. Um, let's see, what else can we do? So I'm just going to let's do an example here, Mr. Make this larger, easy way to do that. Is like so. Okay, that's my name. Um, there are just a couple of commands that I want you guys to be familiar with that are sort of universal and you know probably the most used and useful uh, commands in any image editing program, and those are going to be zoom, pan, and undo. Uh, and you will undo a lot. I undo a lot too. It doesn't matter how experienced you are. Probably, maybe even the more experienced you are, the more you will undo things. Ponder that for a moment. Um, but let's start with zoom. There are lots of ways that you can zoom in. Uh, while you guys are image editing, I highly, highly suggest that you, if you can, if at all possible, you somehow get a mouse. Uh, Barring having an actual drawing tablet, a mouse is going to be the most useful tool to you. It's so much easier to use a mouse than to use a touchpad on a laptop uh, when you're trying to draw something, especially manually. Uh, so if you have access, use a mouse. After the, well, So with the zoom tool, if you have a mouse, the easiest way to zoom in and out is going to be to use the mouse wheel. That would be this wheel right here. The mouse wheel, if you hold down the Alt key while you are scrolling with the mouse wheel, if you scroll up, it zooms in. If you scroll down, it zooms out. So it's a really quick and easy way. You already have your hands on the mouse uh, if you're editing with the mouse. So it's, it's a really fast. You don't have to you know, go over. You could go over to the magnifying glass tool, and you can use it that way. If you click with the magnifying glass tool, it zooms in. If you hold the Alt key and click, it zooms out. You can also control the magnifying, or the zoom tool, sorry, the zoom tool uh, from the options bar. Remember, the options bar gives you options for whatever tool you currently have selected. So I could do fit to the area. I could do pixel to pixel. That means pixel to the left pixel, leftmost pixel of my canvas to all the way to the rightmost pixel of my canvas. Um, or I can just manually zoom in and out there. Uh, one a little bit more advanced feature uh, is if you do have the zoom tool, and the shortcut for the zoom tool, by the way, is Z. It should be pretty uh, self-evident. But if you click and drag to the right with the zoom tool, it zooms in. And if you click and drag to the left with the zoom tool, it zooms out. So there's a bunch of different ways you can zoom in and out. You can also, if you really want to, you can also do it through the view menu. Remember the menu bar? There are all well, there are always going to be a dozen different ways to do the same thing in, 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 in Photoshop and in Photopea. Um, so just keep in mind that you can do it that way, you can do it this way, you can do it with the mouse. However you want to do it, whatever is most convenient and, and, and is most efficient for you, do it that way. 
For me personally, I like to use my mouse and I hold the Alt key. That is my, that's my go-to way to zoom in and out. All right, our next word and command that you need to know is pan. Pan. To pan is to move back and forth across the image, to drag the image around. Now, if you are all the way zoomed out, I don't need to pan this. If I, I mean, I can move it over to the left and the right, but it's not going to do anything. You can see that. So the hand tool down here allows you to pan. And if I click with the hand tool, I'm zoomed all the way out, and I can see the entire image on my screen. It doesn't do anything. But when I am zoomed in, if I am editing you know, a photograph really close, and I want to be able to move around without having to zoom out, move over and zoom back in to a different spot, I can pan. I can click on the hand tool, and I can click and drag and move myself around. Um, an easier and more efficient way, of course, there is one uh, way to do that, is no matter what tool I'm on, if I, let's say I'm busy uh, brushing, Okay, fine. You can do that. You know, let's say I'm busy brushing here, and I go over here, and I'm drawing a worm or whatever, and I get to the edge. Instead of having to zoom out, oops, not, hold the space bar. Space bar temporarily activates the hand tool so that even though I'm in the middle of brushing something, I can hold the space bar, click and drag, and move over. All right, the next uh, command, and nearly the last, I promise that you need to know is the undo command. Undo is uh, control Z. Just like in most editing programs, most anything, I mean in most programs, uh, control Z is going to be the undo key. So control Z, undo, undo. And you can also do it one at a time. If you go through the edit menu, you can go to undo and redo or step backwards allows you to move backwards one step at a time in your history. We'll talk about history later. Um, all right, I think that is about all. Um, there is a, okay. There is one last one I suppose that we should go through, which is saving, saving your work. Uh, we're not going to get into file types yet, but know that saving as a PSD, save as a PSD, uh, is what you're going to use any time that you are um, are still going to be working on a project later. Like even if you leave your tab, the tab open, you know your laptop might die. Anything could happen to it uh, that might accidentally close that tab. So I always, always recommend that once you're done editing, if you're done, you know, for a while, but you're going to come back to it, go to File and save it as a PSD. Saving as a PS, a PSD will save all of your layers. It will save you know everything that you've done so far and allow you to pick up from that spot and still keep everything um, as you know maximally editable as possible. Um, if you are all done with something, uh, then you're going to go to File, Export As, and then JPEG. And oftentimes, I will ask you to turn in both a PSD and a JPEG. Uh, to upload both of those to Canvas to turn in your assignments. Um, the PSD allows me to, to go in and really look at the work that you've done. It's like checking your work, um, seeing you know, if I ask you to make you know, five layers and put this on one layer and this on another layer, then the PSD is what's going to allow me to do that. Um, the JPEG allows me to do like a quick preview and see your work that way. Um, so sometimes I'll just ask for a JPEG if it's a really simple assignment that I know you guys can do. Um, uh, but I will also often ask you for both the PSD and the JPEG. Uh, so you're going to, to save as a JPEG. There's no save as JPEG command. It's export as. So you go to File, Export as, JPEG. Uh, 